Hello everyone, Monty here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a chicken meatloaf panini and just how quick it is to make some of these dishes when you have food prepped. So first I'm going to build the sandwich and I'm going to put it in the panini maker. It's preheating right now. Um, the bread I used to only eat was Alvarado Street Bakery sprouted flaxseed bread. I can't find it anywhere anymore. I don't know if they discontinued it. I went to the website. I didn't even see it on the company's website anymore. So I think they discontinued it. It was 100 calories for two pieces, which I loved, and the flavor was great. Now I buy this, uh, this um, it's called One Degree um, Sprouted Lentil Grain Bread. I get it at Whole Foods. It really doesn't taste that great, but it's not awful, and it's a big piece of bread. Uh, but, you know, I like having avocado toast. I like having panini. So I'm using this bread right now. I'm still looking for something else that I like more but uh, very healthy ingredients, very natural. That's what I like about it, not a lot of bad stuff. So even though the flavor's not great, it's not horrible, and it serves its purpose for me having that toast or that panini. So you're gonna see how big this is. We're gonna take two pieces of, of the panini and show you how quick it is to make this. Then I'm gonna slice some apple also. So the bread is pretty big, as you can see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I first build the sandwich and then what I do is I'm gonna take a piece of the chicken meatloaf that I made yesterday, and it's much smaller than the bread. So what I do is I kind of break it apart a little bit and spread it out so it's all over the bread. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm just breaking it up to be bigger and spread it all over. So there'll be chicken meatloaf everywhere on the bread. Sometimes it's big enough, most, most of the time it isn't because this is a very big piece of bread. Okay, so there we go. Now it's spread out over the whole thing. Get a little towel to wipe my fingers. Okay, then I take, I love this 40 calorie Sargento Swiss cheese. I also buy the cheddar cheese. Most cheese is like 100 and 110 calories a slice. This is very thinly sliced, and it is enough to melt over there and give you the flavor of the cheese. And just put that on top. And then sometimes I can put um, a little spinach or something on top. Today I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna do the meatball and um, the meatball and Swiss cheese. And then just put this away. Great when you have this all cooked. Now, this is an Isiler, I S I L E R panini. It does a great job, but I will I'm not recommending this because the plates don't remove. It was very cheap on Amazon. But um, I used to use a small George Foreman, and then it broke, and that did a great job and put the ridges in really nice. So if you're gonna buy a panini maker, buy one that has removable plates, like my George Foreman. I just grilled some uh, chicken breast, and the plates remove. I threw it in the threw it in the sink and was able to wash, but this one I gotta wash it by hand and I hate that, so I'm eventually gonna go buy another one, but it works great, and I've been spending so much money lately on so much other stuff, I just don't wanna spend any other money wastefully when this works great. So you can see it's really hot, it's steaming. I'm just gonna spray it with some extra virgin olive oil spray, and then be careful when you put it in. I always put it in with one side down and then drop it, and make sure it's very, this is very hot, you will burn your hands. And then I use Alexa, I close it, and I say, Alexa, set timer for three minutes. So you're gonna see how I make my lunch so quickly. Starting now. So, By the way, I can remind you to take a lunch break every day. Would you like me to do that? No. She wants to remind me to take a lunch break. No problem. Boy, she's getting talkative. So now I'm gonna take my cutting board. I've got a small honey crisp apple here. And while that's cooking, I'm just gonna slice it. I'm sure you guys know how to slice an apple, but for those of you who may want to watch me do it, I just go around the apple, cut around the core. Because you know I'm going to take pictures of it, so I always want it to look pretty. And then I just make my apple slices. And then I'm kind of crazy to make it look pretty. So good. I kind of arrange them on the bottom of the plate and alternate like the rind, the uh, skin showing and not showing, and just kind of like do that. Oh, I do 
and slice one part of it. And then I just make little designs, just up and down. Here we go, just like that. It'll make it look pretty for my pictures. I just alternate it back and forth. And then I can put some of these smaller pieces in the back. Then we're ready to plate it. So I'm gonna turn the camera off and I will turn it back on when we are ready to take it out of the um, panini maker. Okay guys, the timer just went off and here's that panini. See all the ridges, it looks beautiful. And I'm just gonna cut it at an angle. And then I take it and I put one triangle this way, one this way to make it look beautiful. And look at that beautiful meatball and Swiss cheese panini. Something about having the ridges and the texture just makes it look so much nicer. So it took literally five minutes to make this lunch. And that's what I love about having food prep like the meatloaf. Hope you enjoyed my video today of how to make a chicken meatloaf and Swiss cheese panini.